Welcome to the Taste Spot TV's Wine Room. Today, a special treat, we are actually going across the country doing a, a kind of virtual wine tasting. Tony, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what to call exactly what we're doing. Virtual tasting, I guess. A virtual tasting, yeah, kinda. Now, Tony, uh, Tony's with Augusta Winery uh, out of Augusta, Missouri. Share with us the story of Augusta Winery to start out. Well, I've been making wines in Missouri for 31 years, and uh, I started out with Winery Little Hills in St. Charles, Missouri, mm -hmm. and then in 1988 I opened uh, the Augusta Winery, which is right in downtown Augusta, a small little town of 250 people. And uh, then in uh, 98, 10 years later, uh, uh, Montel Winery came up for sale, which is about two miles from Augusta. And I bought that as well. The first one we're going to taste here is the Saval Blanc. And uh, this is uh, from uh, Montel Winery, correct? This is your other winery that you own. Uh, let, let's hear the, uh, the story behind this one. Well, uh, you know, of course, this is uh, Saval Blanc is the varietal. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saval Blanc is a French-American hybrid. And uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with this variety. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a variety that's uh, really... Uh, unique to regional wines. Mm -hmm. uh, these grapes varieties were, were established, uh, you know, at, at the end of the uh, uh, 18th century in uh, France, in Montpellier, France. And uh, the, the reason that they developed these grapes is to try to find a, a, a vine that would grow in France and resist phylloxera because all the vinifera grapes were dying. Mm -hmm. So essentially what they did is they uh, cross-pollinated uh, American varieties with uh, French vinifera varieties, and they came up with thousands and thousands of these. Sure, so you need a grape that can really stand up to, to such harsh climate changes very quickly. Exactly. And, and Sable uh, Blanc was one of the first varieties to be introduced into Missouri. And uh, I think we're probably one of the few people in Missouri uh, or perhaps in the Midwest, that continue to uh, grow and, and vinify this uh, this variety. Our next one here uh, is 2009. Is this, uh, I want to make sure I'm announcing this one, because right, I haven't seen this before. Is this the Cynthiana? Uh, this is uh, the uh, Montel Cynthiana. Okay. It's, it's the same as Norton. Okay, okay. Are you familiar with the Norton grade? Sure, sure. Okay, uh, Norton and, and Cynthiana, and you can also call it Virginia Seedling. Okay. Uh, they, they, you can use all those names for the, for one grape varietal. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a Native American variety. It's really uh, it's really the only uh, Native American variety that really works well for for a dry red wine. Mm -hmm. uh, we've experimented with a lot of them, and uh, we just haven't been able to find one that we really liked until we got to the Norton. This has been grown in, in the, uh, the Augusta region for over 150 years. And in fact, we farm one of the vineyards now that uh, uh, that this, the Norton grape was, was grown on. And uh, that, uh, that vineyard dates back to uh, 1954, so 1854. Oh, wow. Correction. So, uh, we, we, we don't have the vines, the vines aren't that old, but mm -hmm. the vineyard is. Now this being a Native American grape, is there a history? Were they making wines out of this uh, years and years and years ago before uh, it was it was discovered, you know, more mainstream? Exactly, because, uh, you know, one of the things that they were trying to do, I mean, any time that, you know, the British colonized the country, they were trying to bring wine back to uh, England, mm -hmm. and so... You know, they tried originally growing uh, grapes in, in Virginia uh, using Vitis vinifera and didn't have a lot of luck. So mm -hmm. that as, as people moved out west, they still tried to grow grapes and make wine that they could export back to uh, not only the, uh, the colonies, but to uh, uh, England as well. Okay. So uh, this is a variety that they found growing wild in, uh, in Virginia. Uh, and uh, they uh, domesticated it. Uh, it. It moved its way out to, to Missouri, and it, and it actually did quite well in Missouri, mainly because of the fact that uh, Norton requires a real long growing season. Mm -hmm. we, we harvest this grape usually in the middle of October, but 
but we've uh, let it hang as late as uh, mid-November uh, sometimes. Oh, wow. Wow. It requires, you have to have a lot of sunlight, you have to have a lot of heat, and you have to have a long growing season. So... Our last one here we have uh, from Augusta, Chamberson. Okay, this is a 2008 from Augusta. What's the story behind this one? Well, Chamberson, again, is a, uh, it's a French-American hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of the grapes that has, uh, you know, come from uh, Montpellier. This, was, this one actually was planted quite extensively in, in southern France, and it also made its way to Australia. Uh, in fact, you can find... Uh, Chamberson in Australia, they, they, a lot of it is turned into a sparkling wine, if you can believe that. Really? Make a sparkling red wine. Um, but anyway, this, this does really well in our climate. Um, you know, the, 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 the grapes are uh, fairly disease resistant. They grow well in this, uh, this particular area. This wine has some, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, Berry flavors. In addition, it has a little bit of uh, black cherry. Mm -hmm. Pick up a little bit of black cherry, and and then I also pick up a little bit of licorice in this mm -hmm. as well. It is. It's not not as full bodied as, as the uh, Cynthia is. Mm -hmm. This is more one <coughs> that I could even just just drink on its own. It doesn't necessarily need something paired with it. That black cherry really very very prevalent in there. It kind of reminds me of some of the wines that I've had um, out of the northern Michigan area. Uh, being, you know, cherry country up there, uh, but it, it really has that nice full-bodied body, full body kind of tart cherryness that hits you, but it really, it sticks around, and it just, it it's good. It's, it's a good drinking wine. I could see this pairing well with a lot of foods, but it's a nice one. If you just want a nice red to open up, this, you know, this stands up to, you know, I think almost any of the, 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 the nice full-body reds you get out of California. That's a big thing right now with our, our Midwest wine show that we're doing is, uh, kind of exploring some of these wines that you're going to find in the Midwest, people that may not know about them, and showing them just really how good they can be. And this is, I think, the prime example of one of those that really stands up, you know, to, to almost any wine produced in, in our in this country. And the, and the nice thing about it is the wines from the Midwest pair well with the foods. You know, mm -hmm. I, I could pair this, I would pair this with a, a, a leg of lamb. Yeah. And uh, we, we raise a lot of lamb around here. In fact, we, we have lamb on our uh, on our vineyard. Mm -hmm. We used to keep the grass cut and and also for uh, uh, you know a meat product as well. Mm -hmm. I can I have a lamb recipe where I do a, a fennel spice rub where it's fennel, coriander. Uh, some gray salt and black pepper all kind of crunched up together and you really you coat the hell out of that lamb leg and you roast it down for like eight hours get some onions and you kind of uh, put it into the middle of the lamb leg I could see spices like that with a fennel I'm thinking of sausage as well that could pair very very well with this almost you know Italian type dishes I could see going really well with this well, you know I, I think the fennel would go really good because there's there's a, a little bit of a, just a hint of herbaceousness in this wine yeah there is. I think which would uh, which would uh, really match well with the fennel. I love. I really like this one. This is a great one. That this is my favorite of the whole group right here. <laughs> Save the best till last. People's favorite too, you know. This one you could drink as a, as a uh, and as an aperitif, you know, or as a cocktail. Sure. Drink. Sure, that's, that's really nice. If, if uh, any of our viewers out there, obviously it's going to depend on the part of the country that they're in as far as shipping laws and all that go, because those are kind of crazy depending on where you're at. Uh, how would somebody get a chance to, to try some of these wines? How can they, can they order from your website or what can they do? They can order from the website uh, because we really, we only uh, distribute through uh, uh, the contiguous states to uh, Missouri. Okay. And then a lot of times the wines that make it out into those uh, uh, outer states really aren't the dry wines. They're, mm -hmm. you know, some of the sweeter wines. So sure. the best bet is to go onto our website, uh, AugustaWinery.com mm -hmm. or Montel.com, and uh, all the wines are there. Uh, we ship to, I think we ship to about 25 states. So. Okay. Uh, well, we've got half of them anyway, you know. Yeah, exactly. Slowly but surely, we'll take over the world with wine. <laughs> Tony, Kuyum, John, thank you so much for joining us on the Taste Bot TV's Wine Room. Thank you.